thing now. There it is. Class. Class. Oh my God, we're recording. Yeah. I know, it's like, there it is. Class. Class. So, um, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. The, um, the problem is over here. I'm going to draw it up here. And that is that we, are, that we are launching something. It's a long, flat shooting range. And we launch something at an angle like this. And it's a 25 degree angle. And it's 29.9 meters per second, not quite 30 meters per second. Right? Now, the good news is, the good news is that we're going to solve this thing by using the same, the same exact thing that we've done before. Okay, so we're going to use X and VI and VF and A and T. All right? So this is very good news. Okay, uh, but the bad news is that I don't know quite what to do with this, right? And maybe you don't because you haven't seen this before. I'm walking off the camera. I'm about I'm back on the camera. Wait a minute. Okay. So, so what do we know? We know the, uh, the distance. No, we don't. Velocity. We got the 29.9 meters per second. Definitely, right? Yeah. Ah, it's not either horizontal or vertical. Now, if only there was a way to take a vector that's like this and figure out how much of it is sideways and how much of it is that way. Is there a way? How do we do that? Is it cosine and sine? That's amazing. Yeah, I should have taught you that right before we did this. Oh, I did. I did teach you that. Yeah, okay. So. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> okay. So this is what we're going to do, right? If they give you an angle magnitude vector, the first thing you do, and you always do this, you can never, ever do anything with an angle magnitude vector. You always have to break them into components. Okay? So let's break this thing into components. This guy here is 29.9 cos 25. This one here is 29.9 sine. 25? Yeah? So figure that out. Take your calculator, take your notes, figure out those things and, and write them down on your paper. Write them down. Can we be quiet, guys? Write them down with, with a bunch of sig figs, because these are not the answer. Ultimately, we want to know how long it stays in the air, where it hits the ground, um, all these things. Oh, don't round it off. Write it down with like three digits after the decimal point at least. Okay. This looks like you have a calculator out and you are touching the calculator. This looks like you have a calculator out and you are touching the calculator. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come back. Come back. Now, I think we've all done this. We've all done 29.9 sine, 29.9 cosine. Actually, these are, I did this exactly backwards, right? This guy should be sine. This guy here should be cosine, yes? And I know that because this number is bigger and that side should be bigger. This number here is smaller and this side should be the smaller side. Yeah? Okay, now what do we do? Now I think we can go, right? So where, where do we put these numbers? 
plug in what we know. Where does this guy know? Where does the horizontal part go? So that's the horizontal velocity. So that goes over here. I'm going to put this guy in here, 27.0986. I know that this is 0. I know that this is 27.0986. Anytime this thing is in the air, it's going to have the same horizontal component because things don't, their velocities don't change in midair, right? So the horizontal velocity will stay the same. It's looking pretty good, right? What about this, what about this acceleration here? Negative 9.8, that's looking pretty good, right? That's a friend, okay? But now we need a few more things in the, in the vertical department there, right? So what else, what else do we know? Initial velocity is not zero, right? So what is it? It's initially, it's 12.63. 63 is what I'm writing down, yeah? Now, there's a trick, and we haven't done this for a while, but what's the trick when you've got a vertical problem and you throw something up in the air, and it comes back down, and it comes back down to the same elevation. It's going in the same speed but the negative direction, right? So the final velocity for hitting the ground is negative 12.6363. You can also, by the way, use that the net change in elevation is zero. Isn't it zero? The net change is zero. It starts at the ground, and where does it end? At the ground, okay? So we could use that. I Personally, don't use that. You can. I think it's harder. I just use these guys. Okay. Now, I think we can find time. What, what formula do we want to use to find time? I think you want to use one that does this, this, this. In other words, the one that doesn't have x in it. Which one's that? That's the one. Okay. So vf is vi plus at. Use that one now. Take your calculators and calculate what the time is. And it's not zero. I promise you it's not zero. Calculate what the time is. Vertical displacement is zero. Horizontal is not. Vertical is, right? Watch. It, it starts at the ground, and where does it end up? At the ground, right? So the elevation doesn't change. I get the time is like 2.5788. Something like that, yeah. You're either going to get that or zero if you're not clear on math, how to do math, right? But when you put this in, you actually get some number, right? Because it's minus 12.63, right? So when you put this on this side, it becomes like negative 20 something five or. Are we good? Do we have the time? We figured out the time. Then what do we do with time? What, do we, what can we do with time? Bring it right over, right? So 2.5788, right? And now what can we figure out? Yeah, we can figure out x, right? So x is vi times t. So it's easy. It's this times this. So go ahead and do that. Take your calculator, and by touching it, Multiply these guys together, right? Sixty nine point eight eight. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Guys, are we are we following along? Are we? 69, yeah, 0.88 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've answered this one. Now the question is that we answered all the questions up there. The first one was find the hang time. Hang time is a time in the air. Did we find that? Yeah, the hang time is about 2.6 seconds. Yeah. Um, the second question is find the range. Range is the horizontal distance that it travels. It's, and I think we figured that out, right? Here's the range. Here's the hang time. Yeah? The next question says, find the speed at the highest point and the greatest height. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there we go. 